Good morning. I am Stephen Wells, president of New Mexico Tech, and I want to welcome all of you to our university's 2022 commencement ceremony. It is a great pleasure to see so many of you here today, and this is a great crowd. Let's give yourselves a round of applause. We have with us our graduates, parents, family members, faculty and staff, fellow students, alumni and other supporters. And we have so many people who are also watching and joining us via live stream uh, on either uh, Facebook or on our uh, YouTube. So thanks to all those who are joining us today electronically or here in person. Thank you very much. This is a century year old celebration of academic success and probably the most important day in the lives of our graduates. So with that, please be seated. And as our graduates are sitting down, please notice that there is a uh, special gift on your chair from the Office of the President, and we hope you make good use of that gift. This year's commencement marks the third academic year affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. That means our graduates have had to manage restrictions, changes, physical and mental issues, and many uh, more ch types of challenges for a good portion of their academic year. So congratulations to those graduates and everyone who supported them for navigating and persevering through this arduous phase of your academic life. And although the COVID-19 restrictions and requirements have been lifted, and maybe even relaxed for the past few months, we're still working through some of the remnants of those pandemic efforts that we've had and this, these students who have were not able to walk with us in graduation in the years of 20 and 21 are here today to take part of this today's ceremonies. So a special welcome to our students who are now graduating and walking in 20, uh, from 2020 and 2021 who are here today. So what I'd like to do first is please. So I'd like uh, everyone from the New Mexico Tech class of 2020 to stand and be recognized. Would you please stand? And now I'd like everyone from the New Mexico class of 2021 to stand and be recognized. Traditionally, we would be sitting in celebration on the New Mexico Tech campus uh, near Brown Hall, which is our administration building. But uh, right now, that building is under construction and will not be completed until next, next year. So we are here today uh, in this remarkable facility provided by the city of Socorro. It's the city of Socorro sports complex and rodeo grounds. And so I would like to give a big round of thanks to our mayor, Rabbi Basker, to the Socorro Complex and people, and uh, thank them all for all their help here. So let's, let's give them a big round. <laughs> I also want to thank the NMT Commencement Committee for all their hard work, as, long as, the as well as the Registrar's Office, and all of the volunteers who've helped organize and produce this special event. So let's give them a round of applause. Many of them were here at five o'clock in the morning. And while we're here in large part to celebrate your accomplishments, our students, it's also a time to reflect upon and support. It's time for to reflect upon and recognize those who've supported you, your parents, your fam family, your friends, who've joined us today. So let them know how much you've recognized and appreciate their support, both emotional and fiscal. So let's give them a round of applause, family and, and friends. It's now my pleasure to introduce the members of the platform party. So when I say your name, would you please stand? And I'll be starting with the members 
of the New Mexico Tech Board of Regents. Regent and Chair Deborah Peacock. <laughs> Regent Dr. David Lepree, Sr. <laughs> Student Regent Veronica Espinoza. And our additional representatives are Associate Vice President for, Back for Academic Affairs, Michael Jackson. <laughs> Dr. Neely Dunbar, Interim Vice President for Research. <laughs> Dr. David Green, Vice President for Student Life. Mr. Michael Bolgrel, Director of the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement. Dr. Corey LeClaire, Professor of Chemical Engineering and Dean of Engineering. Dr. Steve Simpson, Professor of Communication and Dean of Arts and Sciences. Dr. Michael Hargather, Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Faculty Senate Chair. Dr. Matthew Heisler, Associate Director of the Laboratories of the Bureau of Geology. <laughs> Dr. Robert Balch, Director of the Petroleum Recovery Research Center. <laughs> Mr. Damian Banks, Student Speaker. Dr. Claudia Mora, Dean of the Jackson School of Geosciences at the University of Texas in Austin and our keynote speaker. So from all of us on the platform, as well as the entire faculty, staff, students, and alumni, congratulations to you, class of 2022. So I'm going to encourage all of you to take a look at your commencement program for 2022. The program lists names of all of our candidates, their degrees, majors, and honors. The program also lists departmental awards and other types of interesting details about the class of 2022. Also, I invite you to take a look at the online e-program on our university's website, which has hypertext link to photos, award winners, and more items that help you understand and celebrate the class of 2022. So as president, this is a time where I normally um, share some inspirational thoughts regarding what you've learned and how you will go forward, transform the world as future change makers, as decision makers. However, after nearly three years of adversity related to an unprecedented global pandemic, your presence here today, you and your presence on this graduation day are truly the inspiration to all of us. No words can describe your resilience and your accomplishments. Over the past four years, you have worked diligently to obtain the gifts of knowledge, not only academically, but in truly knowing yourself. As a famous author once stated in the commencement address they gave, you will never truly know yourself or the strength of the relationships, both until both have been tested by adversity. Such knowledge is a true gift, and there is little doubt that all of you have been tested by adversity that goes beyond the normal academic challenges. But here you are, graduating, beginning a new journey in your life. So take these hard-earned gifts and all the tools, the motivation, and the, the resilience that you've learned at New Mexico Tech in the classroom, the lab, the residence halls, at the El Camino, perhaps even at the Capitol Bar. I saw some of you last night. And apply that knowledge and experience to better your future as well as society's future, no matter where you call home. Our communities, our nation, our world need your experience, your energy, and your enthusiasm to address the most pressing issues facing humanity and those that will unfold over the next decades. As part of your academic journey, 
at New Mexico Tech, you earned an honor and a term of endearment as a student, and now as an alumnus. You are and will forever be a techie. And as a techie, each one of you have been woven into the history of potential, intellect, dedication, and of course resilience that have been part of the ethos of New Mexico Tech since it was founded in 1889. To our techies of 2022, whatever comes next on your journey, please take time to come back to our campus. Please come back and visit us because you know, need to know you're always welcome at our campus. Now, all of us know that techies are a data-driven group, so consistent with a long-standing tradition we have here at Tech, I'm going to give you some vital statistics and data about the class of 2022. So the average GPA of today's bachelor's recipients is 3.34. That is amazing. And just under 76% of you have earned GPAs of 3.0 or greater. 74 of you, or 34%, have received at least one F in a course at New Mexico Tech. But here you are, you made it. Six of you are graduating with a perfect 4.0 GPA. The youngest bachelor's recipients are 19 years old. And the most senior recipient is 43 years old. Once we are done here today, New Mexico Tech will have awarded 6,947 bachelor's degrees in the history of our institute. We have awarded, we have awarded 2,835 master's degrees and 432 PhDs in our history. The most well-represented department today is mechanical engineering, with 49 bachelor's degrees being awarded today. And the most well-represented department at the master's degree level is, again, mechanical engineering. Do you see a theme here? With 19 degrees being awarded. So thank you, uh, mechanical engineering. You're doing wonderful. While the most represented department at the PhD level with four degrees is the chemistry department. So congratulations, chemistry. Here's some other interesting facts about you, the class of 2022. Although you are a very diverse group, nearly 88% of our bachelor's undergr or undergraduates hail from New Mexico, including students from Farmington to Carlsbad, from Shiprock to Silver City, from Waterus to Las Cruces, and all points in between. So it's great to see all of you, and hopefully the parents have come those distances. And from out of state, the class of 2022 includes students from Arizona, California, Colorado, the District of Columbia, Georgia, Michigan, Mississippi, North Carolina, Nevada, Texas, Utah, and Wisconsin. So welcome all of you. And this year's international students earning degrees hailed from Bangladesh, Cameroon, Canada, Ghana, India, Sri Lanka, Trinidad, Tobago, Turkey, and Vietnam. So welcome all of you. <laughs> Additionally, there are eight alumni from Socorro High School graduating today, so congratulations to our hometown students. Each year, New Mexico Tech recognizes outstanding research, teaching, and service by faculty and staff at our institute. To present the Teaching and Distinguished Service Award, I'd like to introduce today our Associate Vice President of Academic Affairs, Dr. Michael Jackson, who will make the award presentations. Thank you, President Wells. It is my pleasure to present the Distinguished Teaching Award of 2022 
to Dr. Minnie Mao of the Physics Department. Dr. Mao, please come forward. The Distinguished Teaching Award is presented each year to a faculty member based on recommendations and nominations from students, alumni, and other faculty. Dr. Mao is an instructor in the Department of Physics, having received her PhD from the University of Tasmania in Australia, and having had postdoctoral fellowships in Europe and at the NARO uh, here, right here in Socorro. Dr. Mao joined the NMT faculty in 2019 and is known as an enthusiastic and engaging instructor with excellent communication skills and a highly interactive manner. She encourages class participation and uses many live demonstrations in her courses. Some comments from Dr. Mao's students to share with you include, she is an amazing professor who cares about her students and wants to see them all succeed. She's so energetic and willing to help anyone at any time. She's passionate about her teaching and is overall an amazing person. Dr. Mao is an extremely knowledgeable, approachable, kind, fair, and attentive professor. She is a great teacher and genuinely cares about her students. And finally, Minnie is one of the most respected and loved professors on this campus. Everyone who meets her adores her because of her humor, wit, and candor. I also find that she is compassionate beyond comparison to others and acts on her compassion for others regularly through helping students or seeking out students who aren't doing well. President Wells, I am pleased to be able to announce the 2022 Distinguished Teaching Award to Dr. Minnie Mao. It is also my pleasure to present the 2022 Distinguished Service Award to Dr. Curtis O'Malley of the Mechanical Engineering Department. <laughs> Dr. O'Malley earned his doctorate in civil engineering from the Georgia Institute of Technology in 2011 after working for the U.S. Army at Aberdeen Testing Center and Central New Mexico Community College. He arrived at NMT and since 2016 has been an assistant professor in the mechanical engineering department. Dr. O'Malley's research contributions have provided countless uh, opportunities for K through 12 students to engage in STEM. He founded the mechanical engineering K through 12 outreach program, has assisted colleagues with their development of drone competitions, has helped innovate a STEM summer roadshow for rural areas of New Mexico, and founded the NM uh, Robot Combat League, which has provided another opportunity for middle and high school students to engage in STEM activities. His first competition was held in the spring of 2021, and in one year has grown to over 40 teams achieved by forging relationships with, for example, New Mexico Mesa, in which he supported Mesa teachers in learning the material needed to coach a robotics team. According to Ling Faith Huertz, director of Mesa, Dr. O'Malley has directly impacted student lives with his teaching materials, supporting teachers' professional learning, and giving these groups a glimpse of how exciting the engineering process can be. These students and teachers now see the value of the process. They know that they can get their value at NMT with Dr. O'Malley and all and are developing relationships in NMT to create their STEM identities. For these reasons, Dr. O'Malley is truly deserving of NMT's Faculty Distinguished Service Award. President Wells, I am pleased to introduce the winner of the 2022 Distinguished Service Award, Dr. Curtis O'Malley.
And now, I'd like to introduce Dr. Neelia Dunbar, Vice President of Research. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jackson, for that introduction. The recipient of the Distinguished Research Award is chosen by a committee of tech faculty and researchers from a list of candidates nominated by their colleagues. It's my pleasure to present the 2022 Distinguished Research Award to Dr. Matthew Peisler, who is a Principal Senior Geochronologist and Associate Director for Laboratories at the New Mexico Bureau of Geology and Mineral Resources, which is a research subdivision of tech. Dr. Heisler is a geochronologist and thermochronologist, which means that he studies the age and history of rocks. He does this work in his world-class laboratory on the New Mexico Tech campus, which serves students and professional researchers nationwide and really from around the world. Dr. Heisler joined the Bureau in 1993 during his tenure, he's published 147 peer-reviewed publications, which have been cited over 5,000 times. He's also written 30 successful proposals and has brought close to $4 million of funding to New Mexico Tech. He's also advised and mentored numerous students. Dr. Heisler's nomination for the Distinguished Research Award was enthusiastically supported by colleagues at University of New Mexico, UCLA, and University of Edinburgh in Scotland, who were unanimous in praising his accomplishments, his research creativity, his collegiality, and particularly his ability to work productively with researchers who, uh, whose ideas might differ from his own. He's also been wonderful at bringing together a community of scientists in his field. Dr. Heisler has addressed many, many research topics in his career, too numerous to go through today. But right now, he's working on a creative idea to understand the history of rivers by dating volcanic sand grains found in river sediments, which, in the words of UNM geology professor Dr. Carl Karlstrom, represents a truly transformative approach to understanding the uplift of the Rockies, the age of the Grand Canyon, and the evolution of our own Rio Grande, just east of where we're standing today. Um, Dr. Karlstrom further goes on to describe Matt as a tireless advocate and servant for geoscience research in New Mexico and internationally. So with this strong endorsement, President Wells, I am pleased to present the 2022 Distinguished Research Award to Dr. Matthew Heisler. Thank you, Dr. Dunbar. We appreciate that. And all of our faculty award winners will be more fully honored during the fall 2022 semester. The true nature of these awards is to honor a complete or a lifetime achievement here at our university. So I give my heartfelt congratulations to Dr. Mao, Dr. O'Malley, and Dr. Heitzler. Congratulations. You're probably also uh, wanting to know what the uh, AVP Jackson had for breakfast this morning, aren't you? So uh, I'd like some of that myself. So we started a tradition six years ago of having one of our university's graduating students provide their thoughts, their reflections, and our advice to our graduating class. This year, I'm pleased to introduce our student speaker, Mr. Damian Banks. I'll say a few words about Damien as he walks up here. He's graduating today with a bachelor's degree in basic sciences. He grew up in Albuquerque, and after a short time at Volcano, Volcano Vista High School, he graduated from Cleveland High School, where he was the uh, captain of the basketball team, and I think you can see why. I asked him to stay away from me to make it so I don't look as short as I really am, so no, Damien. In 2011, Damien started playing competitive uh, video games after trying out for a few semi-professional teams and playing a game called The Call of Duty, which I'm sure you know. And
and ultimately he created his own organization in conjunction with his brother, which has now become a much larger organization over a very short time period. And this is known as Ecliptics Gaming. During his academic career at Tech, Damien interned as a, with a startup esports company called Champerera. I said that right, didn't I? Which uh, partners with universities and private esports organizations from around the nation. And after finishing the last year in December and serving, uh, he's been and serving then at that time for three years as esports president. Damien started working at the New Mexico Tech Office of Advancement, as well as continuing to serve as our director of esports. So I'm very pleased today to introduce Mr. Damien Banks, our student speaker. Oh gosh, I came to New Mexico Tech for a very selfish reason. Um, the only thought in my head at the time was that I wanted to get a good degree that allowed me to buy that Audi R8 V10 plus coupe with the black interior and the bucket seats, you know. <sighs> All right, that's still a thought in my head, but it's not the only thought anymore, I promise. I was in for a surprise my first year here. Um, I went from a 4.0 student who could crank through a homework assignment maybe 10 minutes before class to then wondering if starting my homework a day before that class was enough time to get a good mark. And as most of you know, it's not. I became best friends with this gorgeous, dark-skinned beauty known as coffee. <laughs> Time management became key, and asking for help became less of a pride-bearing task in comparison to getting a bad grade. I learned that tech wasn't just a place for excellence, but it required excellence from each and every student that comes here. Suddenly, I realized that it had nothing to do with how intelligent or fortunate you were, as I saw many of these students leave NMT over their tenure. But it was about resilience, determination, and appreciation. In the words of Albert Einstein, it's not that I'm so smart, it's just that I stay with problems longer. Now, to me, these three words, resilience, determination, and appreciation, bring forth a story, and with each of them, I'd like to share them with you. The definitions of each of these are very important, so I will define them as I see fit. Resilience, the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties or toughness. To be resilient is to never give up and to face adversity when it dares to try and consume your thoughts and your heart. This word very specifically reminds me of my mother, watching her every day as she went back to school and she worked. When I was 16, I had basketball practice, and for one reason or another, we were let out early by our coach. Now, for anyone who knows VSU Cleveland basketball, getting out early is unheard of. And in this case, surely in the eyes of my mother. Now, my mother, she works for CYFD, and she has to hear and see some of the most difficult crimes committed towards children and families. My mother is also the kindest human being that there is on this earth. And in all reality, after five minutes of speaking with her, you would think you know, she sold ice cream or walked puppies or something for a living because she was so happy all the time. Her demeanor is extremely lighthearted. Now this day, this particular day, I walked in the door and that afternoon I was quiet enough because I wanted to jump out and scare her and surprise her. So as I snuck around the corner and I got into my ready position, I could hear some slight sobs coming from her room. Knowing that something had to be drastically wrong in order for her to be in this state, I backtracked to the front door, made as much noise coming back through as possible, and gave the mother, I'm home, yell across the house to make sure that my presence was known. After a quick minute, she ended up coming back around the corner, and as she always does, she hit me with the, hey kid, how was practice, with the biggest smile on her face. She wrapped me up a little tighter than normal that day, and I could feel just from her hug as she was trying not to show her pain, she needed it a little bit that day. So I snuck into a room later, shifted through a little of her case files, and if there was one there that listed age, two months, status, deceased. And that was all that I needed to see. I knew she was struggling because part of her job is she had to go in person in order to make some of these confirmations. A short bit later, she said that she had to go into work and I knew exactly where she was headed. She had to go to the hospital in order to make her confirmation. So the 
throughout all of these days that she continues to have and continues to have a smile on her face, I know that she goes to work and continues to dedicate her life to doing everything she can to help every child and family she possibly can, no matter what that situation is. Now that's what I call resilience. Determination, the firmness of purpose or resoluteness. To be determined is to be unbothered and unwavering toward a goal. This word, this word reminds me of my father. He grew up in one of the most underserved communities within New Mexico. To my father, basketball has always been a medium for him that goes way longer and way deeper than just the sport. It was the driving factor of his life. He was able to earn a college scholarship from it and earn his degree because of it. So my father is a very, very joyous man who will roast you and in the same moment choke on his spit from laughing too hard. My dad has no problem helping others in need and if he can find a way to do so, he will. In that being said, he works harder than my metabolism after an M-Mountain Monster, but you can't stop me, I'm eating it every time. He always told my siblings and I that we were the best thing to ever happen to him, and I don't doubt it for a singular second. He means it, and he makes sure that we know that he means it. With that being said, I believe that my father's purpose was always to be a father, and he has been the best father that I could possibly ever ask for. There was a day that I got to witness my father find a path for himself that I would say changed his life and many more lives that he touched after that. I've never asked him, but I can tell you from my experience that other than becoming a father, there's only one other day that I can say I think he found a new purpose. That date was October 8th, 2009. My great grandmother, who we called Honey, she was 88 years old and she was fighting illnesses which eventually took her life. I have so many fond memories of Honey. It's like I think about her almost every day and I wish she could be here to see what, what I became and the person that I am today. She would be sitting probably somewhere in the front row and offering me a Cherry 7-Up in which my dad would look over and get mad and she would argue that it was worth it. <laughs> she introduced me to the Harlem Globetrotters and Scooby-Doo and she was an absolute joy to be around. Despite my feelings towards her, she raised my father and I know that nobody probably misses her more than him. He would tell me stories about her in her younger days and how her and Papa would give him advice while also scolding him to keep him out of trouble and what they taught him about his life. Now, taking that in full circle, growing up in the world as a black man is dangerous in the ghetto, which is often something that they would try to show him. The day that she passed, I saw my father in a state that I had never seen before. He shed tears and his joyous mood was diminished and I never saw his playful attitude. My hero had a shard of kryptonite protruding from his chest and I had no idea how to help him. Over the next few years, I watched my father wake up earlier and go to bed later. Sometimes falling asleep at the dinner table, but that was the type of work that he was putting in. He was in a relentless type of his own that nobody could really understand and working on something that nobody could shake him out of. And at the time, I didn't really get what he was working on, nor did anybody else. He was still working at his day job, but then this extra job continued to consume his life. All day long, he would, seemed to be just a madman. The project I found out that he was working on was a nonprofit that focused on serving underprivileged youth through events and programs. It wasn't until after many, many years, and I was a lot older, I was standing in the middle of the state fairgrounds at one of the events, which he called Cut for, Cuts for Kids. There were thousands of people standing around me in which he created for kids to get free haircuts and school supplies before the school year to make sure that they had an opportunity to be just like everybody else. There was food there, medical checks, entertainment, you name it. The best part of it all was that not a single person around had to ever pay a dime in order to attend. At that moment, it had finally hit me. It had been years of this firmness that got this to come to fruition. He was steadfast at creating something that large and something so impactful, and he succeeded. Now that's what I call determination. Appreciation, my definition for appreciation is recognition and enjoyment of the good qualities of someone or something. To show appreciation is to show gratitude in a worthy capacity. This word is the hardest personally for me to break down. Now, the reason being is I don't believe it's ever fair. You're supposed to show gratitude in a worthy capacity. 
but what can we define as a worthy capacity? How do you determine what is worthy? I'm a scientist. I prefer for everything to be definitive. This is black or white, yes or no, pass or fail. How can you show gratitude for people who have contributed to your life in ways that are truly beyond return? My grandparents, they gave me my parents. My great-grandparents gave me my grandparents, and you know, so on and so forth. They also gave me my siblings, who I sometimes I wasn't so sure I wanted, but to this day I still can't find the receipts. <laughs> my uncle and my auntie gave me a cousin who might as well be my brother. He's had my back ever since we were young, and he always will. I can never stop being grateful for him. I have a very beautiful partner who stays up late waiting for me and makes sure I don't get lost in my work. I'm not really sure how to show any sort of recognition or appreciation. He, she just wants a ring. Never mind. Let's just be real. She just wants a ring. That's, that one's an easy one. We'll, we'll get to that one. Some of my best friends, my teachers, my acquaintances, there's no way I will ever be able to feel that that debt will be paid. The only way that I know how is by showing appreciation to everyone who I come in contact with. In my mind, passing along this sense of gratitude towards others is the only way that I feel I can make use of this beautiful life that so many others have been able to touch and help me achieve and have impacted this far. Final story. My second year at Tech, I was taking Calculus 2. I can already feel the tears coming out. I'm it was the day before finals, and I was binging Khan Academy and reading through my lecture notes before. My younger sister sent me a message asking if I could help her with an assignment. She just wanted me to proofread it for her, and the title of the file was My Hero. I didn't think much of it, and it was a few pages of some pretty well-written jokes without sharing who the person was. Super vague, but you could feel she had a very strong feeling and some beautiful words to describe this person. After sending her a few revisions and feeling a little bit more rejuvenated, I went back to work. I went to my bed, took my exam, and the next morning as I walked out, I checked my phone and I got a message that looked like a repeat of the same assignment. I sent back a laughing emoji to her and just didn't open it, thinking that there was some sort of error or she didn't mean to do it. After a few hours, I clicked on it wondering why she had sent it again and I began to realize there were more pages that she had written. And the title was that, her hero is me. At the, at the bottom of the page, she wrote that there was never an assignment. She was just proud of me and she missed me. She was proud of what I was doing. Now I stand in front of everybody today as a person who's grown significantly over these last few years in ways that I could have never possibly imagined. I made lifelong friends and some decisions that set me on a path to be very successful, but now it's not about me anymore. It's about the people around me and how I can affect the world. If there was a time machine, I would have done every single thing exactly the same. If I can be here today in front of you all, I know that there is nothing that cannot be achieved. Thank you. Go Miners. Thank you very much, Damien, for those incredible words and inspirational and touching. Next in our ceremony, I'd like to introduce Dr. Steve Simpson, who's our Professor of Communication and Dean of Arts and Sciences, who will announce our Graduate Student Awards. Dean Simpson. Thank you, President Wells. Every year, New Mexico Tech presents two awards for graduate students, the Langmuir Award and the Founders Award. The Langmuir Award for Excellence in Research is given to an outstanding research paper by a student or recent graduate of New Mexico Tech. The paper must have been submitted to or published by a recognized journal during the preceding year. The award is named in honor of Irving Langmuir, a Nobel laureate in 1932, who conducted extensive research with New Mexico Tech staff. The recipient is chosen by faculty nomination and faculty senate election. This award consists of a plaque and a $400 cash award. The Founders Award 
honors the people responsible who are founding the New Mexico School of Mines in Socorro in 1889. The award is given to a person graduating today with an advanced degree who is judged to have made an outstanding contribution to the Institute through scholarship, research, and involvement in campus affairs. The recipient is chosen by faculty nomination and faculty senate election. Um, the award consists of a plaque and an $800 cash award. I am pleased to announce that the recipient of the Langbeer Award is Daniel P. Jensen. Daniel, please join President Wells on stage, Daniel. Dan Daniel here? Oh, okay. Um, Richard, could you come up and receive the award for him? A Farmington na native, Daniel is one of many extraordinary people who have worked at Langmuir Lab, studying lightning under his advisor, Dr. Richard Sonnenfeld. Um, Daniel earned a Bachelor of Science degree from New Mexico Tech in 2016 in physics and mathematics, and he's pursuing a doctorate in physics instrumentation. Since last September, he has been working as a graduate research assistant at Los Alamos National Laboratory on a three-year joint internship between New Mexico Tech and LANL. Dr. Sonnenfeld nominated Daniel for his research paper, Dart Leaders and K-Leader Velocity from Initiation Site Determination, uh, Time Resolve with 3D Interferometry, which was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research in March 2021. Daniel used data from two interferometers collected from a thunderstorm near Langmuir Lab to produce a three-dimensional interferometer data set, uh, the most accurate verified result to date for a broadband lightning interferometer. The data also showed that a certain in-cloud lightning processes called K-leaders slow down as they progress over kilometers an observation not possible without this technology. Daniel has been described as an extraordinary young scientist who produced outstanding research in the study of this exceedingly complex natural phenomenon, becoming more frequent and impactful with climate change. President Wells. I am pleased to announce um, that the recipient is Daniel Jensen. And now for the Founders Award. President Wells, I'm also pleased to announce um, the recipient of the Founders Award is Kyle Stark. Kyle, please come join President Wells on stage. Kyle is a native of Berryville, Virginia. Um, he earned his bachelor's degree from the College of William and Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. He earned his master's degree and doctorate in hydrology um, from New Mexico Tech. His research focused on continuously monitoring the flux of water and sediment during flash floods at a state-of-the-art measurement station he built on the Aurora de los Pinos which drains part of the Quebradas across the Rio Grande from Socorro. This effort has included collaborators from the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation, the Army Corps of Engineers, Ben Gurion University in Israel, GFZ Potsdam in Germany, the U.S. Geological Survey, the Bureau of Land Management, and many local landowners. According to his advisor, Dan Cadal, Kyle has been indispensable in this project and has mentored other students 
working on the project. Um, and he's performed thoughtful, detailed, and creative research. Also during his time at New Mexico Tech, Kyle served as the president of the Graduate Student Association for two years and served as a mentor to GSA leaders. He has been described as having a mindset of service. President Wells, I am pleased to present Kyle Stark, the 2022 Founders Award winner. Um, Associate Vice President Dr. Michael Jackson will present the undergraduate award. Thank you, Dr. Simpson, and congratulations to the Graduate Student Award winners. Now, for the winners of our top scholastic awards for undergraduate students. The Kramer Awards were established to honor Tom Kramer, an engineer and a member of the Tech Board of Regents for 26 years. They are awarded to two graduates in engineering who rank highest in scholarship. Each winner receives a certificate and a $400 cash prize. The recipients are chosen by the Faculty Senate upon recommendation of the engineering faculty. The first Kramer Award recipient is Catherine House, a graduating senior in chemical engineering. Come on down, yep. She is also has a minor in chemistry and is originally from Albuquerque. Now, Catherine has worked as a lab assistant for four years in the NMT uh, Materials Engineering Department under Dr. John McCoy, researching engineering epoxies funded by Sandia National Labs. She also interned for the Metallurgy Department at the Nevada Gold Mines and at the Idaho National Laboratory. A Macy Scholar, she served as treasurer for the NMT student chapter of the American Institute of Chemical Engineering and the Tau Beta Pi Engineering Honor Society. Catherine has been described as reliable, a fantastic student, and a great asset, volunteering her time to mentor chemical engineering underclassmen. She has participated in several research experiences for undergraduates and has presented her work on the national stage at the student poster session, taking first place at the fall 2020 and spring 2021 American Institute of Chemical Engineering conferences. She will attend graduate school this fall at the University of Pennsylvania. President Wells, I am pleased to present the first 2022 Kramer Award recipient, Catherine House. For the second Kramer Award this year, I am pleased to announce the recipient is Isaiah Pahola. Isaiah, please join President Wells on stage. Isaiah is a civil engineering major, originally from Isleta, Pueblo. He was one of seven members of the American Society of Civil Engineers Wildlife Crossing Bridge Design Team from New Mexico Tech that competed in a national competition in Houston. This spring against teams from Texas, Oklahoma, and Mexico. They constructed a one to 10 scaled wildlife bridge made of steel learning about project management, timelines, budget constraints, and presentation skills along the way. Isaiah was this year's ASCE Outstanding Senior Award recipient. Isaiah has taken a position with Wilson & Company Incorporated Engineers and Architects in Albuquerque, New Mexico. His instructor in CE423, Open Channel Hydraulics, commented that Isaiah's homework and take-home exams were the most comprehensive and professionally presented student work he had seen in 20 years of teaching this course. 
President Wells, I am pleased to present the second 2022 Kramer Award recipient, Isaiah Hohola. The Brown Award is named in honor of Mr. C.T. Brown, who was, for many years, a member of the Tech Board of Regents. It is presented to the member of the graduating class who, in the opinion of the faculty, ranks highest in scholarship, conduct, and leadership. The award consists of a plaque and a prize of $1,000. The 2022 Brown Award winner is Tucker Diamond Ames. Tucker joined Tech after graduating from Capitan High School in 2018. His almost perfect GPA and biology major have, over the past four years, been accompanied by a plethora of research intense and community-oriented activities. Tucker re Tucker's research involvement already started during his first year when he joined Dr. Snezna Rogel's drug discovery group. Soon thereafter, he began working with Dr. Thompson's cancer research, which involved mouse brain surgery, histopathology, and a great deal of animal care. While only a rising sophomore, Tucker spent his first university summer as a National Institutes of Health Inbre intern with biochemist Eric Yukel at New Mexico State University. When COVID-19 hit, Tucker jumped to the front lines with those NMT personnel who were willing to risk the unknown to help COVID testing and keep the university and entire Socorro community safe. This further strengthened his determination to pursue a medical career, one with strong emphasis on global health, preventive medicine, and an integral recognition of the importance of mental health overall. As a proactive member of the NMT Pre-Med Club and Student Mental Health Subcommittee, he helped its club president, Ms. Faith Meza, organize numerous educational events that benefited the body, mind, and soul of not just the club members, but our NMT community. Importantly, these included bringing CPR and Narcan training to campus to educate fellow members of the NMT pre-med club and together uh, other NMT students. Tucker recently transitioned from volunteering at Socorro General Hospital to being employed there in the emergency room. He is expected to continue in that position during the upcoming year while applying to and selecting a medical school program of his choice. This May, Tucker was awarded biology department's highest recognition, the shortest award. President Wells, I am pleased to present the 2022 Brown Award winner, Tucker Diamond Ames. In the back section of your commencement program, you will find a list of other student award winners as well as departmental awards. We would also like to acknowledge the tech scholars, students who have demonstrated superior scholastic competence. All of the tech scholars are listed in your program. New Mexico Tech congratulates all of, all of you for your achievements. President Wells. Thank you, Dr. Jackson, and congratulations to our students and board winners. They're just uh, remarkable individuals. Uh, it's now my pleasure to present the, an honorary doctor degree, which is a relatively infrequent but highly significant honor that our university gives. Members of the Department of Computer Science and Engineering faculty nominated John William Shipman for the honorary degree, and the faculty senate voted unanimously to, in favor of conferring the honor. Then the New Mexico Board of Regents unanimously approved the honorary doctorate for John Shipman.
John's contributions to, Me to Mexico Tech and Socorro community include, include supporting education of students in computer science, as well as astronomy, ornithology, and music. John passed away on January 31st, 2017. And he's passed away at the age of, of 67. He had earned a bachelor's degree from the Mexico Tech in 1971 in computer science and was one of the first computer science degree holders in the Western United States. And after working in the computer software industry in the California Bay Area, he returned to New Mexico Tech in 1983 to work as an application specialist and a web developer in both the computer sciences department and with Tech's Computer Center for another 19 years. He also worked for nine years at the Ra National Radio Observatory Operations Center, the NRAO, located on Tech's campus until his retirement in 2013. John taught courses in software construction, clean room software development, operating systems, and practica in programming languages such as Python, LaTeX, and Tex. And as an application specialist, he wrote and organized external and internal documentation, built internal applications, taught informal users classes, and engaged in what he called software technology evangelism. His Python classes were free and open to the general public. Shipman's work was published in the form of publicly released software, scientific databases, and technical references. He single-handedly authored the university's 800-page computer science tutorial and reference website, which was a groundbreaking project that is now being restored by the Computer Science and Engineering Department. And they're being assisted with the information technology and communication staff as well. In addition to his many technological contributions, Mr. Shipman was a well-known amateur astronomer, bird watcher, and performed as a member of the New Mexico Symphony Orchestra Chorus, a true Renaissance man. He volunteered for the National Audubon Society and at our local National Wildlife Refuges, where he participated in bird counts, and he also developed encoding and notations that were used for ornithological database uh, development. A memorial plaque at the Frank T. Etzgore Campus Observatory at the New Mexico Tech campus was dedicated in John's honor on February 18, 2019, in recognition of his contributions to amateur astronomy and his inspirational legacy to our students. Indeed, John Shipman left us all with a wonderful legacy of accomplishments and contributions. Now, I would like to invite Ms. Sally Breeden, John's sister, who is representing the family, to join me on stage to receive the honorary doctorate. Sally, if you could join me, please. I know many of you know John and were touched by him, so this is, this is quite an honor and touching for all of us. Now it's my pleasure to introduce our 2022 keynote speaker, Dr. Claudia Mora. Dr. Mora was raised in Albuquerque and earned a bachelor's degree of science in geology at the University of Mexico, where I'm proud to say that she actually took a class from me. She earned her master's degree from Rice University and her doctorate degree from the University of Wisconsin-Madison where she also has been recognized as a distinguished alum. In 1989, Dr. Moore began her career at the University of Tennessee in Knoxville as the first female geology professor and departmental head. Her research focused on stable isotope proxy, proxy records of fluid rock interaction, paleoclimate, environment, and extreme precipitation events captured in terrestrial archives, such as soils, 
fossil soils, and tree rings. She left Tennessee in 2007 to move to Los Alamos National Lab, where she retuned her research skills for the national security environment. At Los Alamos National Labs, she held positions as leader of the Earth and Environmental Sciences Division, Deputy Program Director for the Nuclear Nonproliferation and Security Program, and Deputy Division Leader of the Chemistry Division. Since February 2022, she has served as the Dean of the Jackson School of Geosciences at the University of Texas, Austin one of the world's largest and most renowned geoscience schools. Dr. Mora has also served the geoscience community in many ways. In particular, in leadership roles, she served as the past president of the Geological Society of America, counselor of the International Union of Geological Sciences, and a member of the U.S. National Committees for Geological Sciences and Soil Sciences. She served on the National Science Foundation Geo Advisory Board and the National Research Council Board of Earth Sciences and Resources. Dr. Mora and her husband, Pete, have, blended, have a blended family of five children in various stages of adulting. We all know what that means, don't we? And a forever home beside the Ezequia Madre in Rio Chiquito in Taos. Please join me in welcoming our 2022 commencement speaker, Dr. Claudia Mora. Thank you. President Wells, Vice President Jackson, Vice President Dunbar, Vice President Green, members of the Board of Regents, distinguished members of the platform party, of the faculty and staff, to the parents and loved ones of the graduating class today, and above all, to the class of 2022. I am so honored to be here today with colleagues I have known for many years and in my home state of New Mexico. Our graduation is a very happy day, one with great anticipation and accomplishments for the, uh, for the students and of satisfaction for the faculty and administrators who have helped you launch. It's a day of pride for your parents and maybe a little bit of relief. Um, I have also experienced the pride and joy of watching my children graduate, but I don't miss writing those checks. One out of two, two out of two, or sorry, one out of eight, two out of eight, nine out of eight, it goes on. I, like, like your president, I too found myself at the Capitol Bar last night. <clears throat> And I did see quite a few of you here, and I just want to call out how palpable your energy was. There's a band there who I think is graduating today, technical difficulties. And you guys were just killing it with a very, very eclectic set, I'll say. Uh, and I think you've got it all set. You just may have to work on your visuals a little bit for Baby, You're a Firework. Um, but. What I had forgotten after spending a, a, more than a decade outside of academia was just the sheer joy of today, the sheer joy of seeing you being where you are now, on the, on the cusp of life after school. Now, the traditional role of graduate, graduation speakers is to look back at their lives and impart the wisdom of hindsight. So basically, it means we're supposed to encourage you to do as we say and not as we did. And my words of wisdom, which are really just short tales of, of my uh, foibles and failures, uh, are by necessity born of, of my life. But the focus really isn't my life, it's yours. You are so talented and so ready for life. I want you to recognize your own humanity and if you will, your human frailties, and be able to see through them and to see that despite whatever imperfections you imagine that you have, and whatever challenges you face, some small, some of them will be enormous, you have what, you, what, you have what it takes to be successful through all of them. I want you to, to know this 
so that you can thrive in your own lives. So let me start here. I grew up in New Mexico, in Albuquerque, and at 17, like most kids who grow there, I had a singular dream. I wanted to blow that popsicle stand as soon as I could. I wanted out of town. I wanted to move somewhere, I don't know, maybe see the ocean, maybe see a real big city. Um, I wanted to go to a restaurant that didn't start with L or La. I wanted to go someplace where the population of the towns exceeded their altitude. And I wanted to go where the roads didn't get better when the pavement ended. Much to my displeasure, I ended up staying at New Mexico for my first college degree. I went to that place up the road that we call University Near Mom. And yep, uh, I've heard all the jokes about it, thank you very much. Here's one, how many freshmen, how many Lobo freshmen does it take to screw in a light bulb? Zero, because that's a sophomore class in UNM. <laughs> I know more. I arrived at UNM then not particularly thrilled to be there and without a firm path in my mind. And the latter was not so much because I'm indecisive, but because I find so much, so many things to be interesting. And this is apparently a long-standing trait. As I cleaned out my parents' home after they passed away, I found a, an essay that they had saved that I wrote in first grade. I wrote, there are three things I want to be when I grow up. One, I want to be an artist. The reason I want to be an artist is because I like to paint. Two, I want to be a writer. The reason I want to be a writer is because I like to write. This is first grade. <laughs> Three, I want to be a scientist. That's how I wrote it. Next sentence, I don't know why I want to be a scientist. That was prescient. So I jumped into classes at UNM and I took a little bit of everything. I had read a book just before starting called The, the World According to the Harvard Business School and I thought I might want to be a captain of industry because that seemed, I bet they did that outside of New Mexico, so I figured. So I took economics. Anyone take that? C plus G plus I equals GNP, well, Z, 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 <laughs> OMG, I thought I would never make it through that class, boring. Creative writing, well, I love to write, but I had a moment of intense pragmatism and realized that I like to eat too. Um, and so my first, it was really my, my first geo class was that, it, it, that's all it took to convince me that I indeed wanted to be a scientist, a geologist, in fact. Now, there were not many girls in geology at the time. There were four or five in my class of 60 majors. I loved my classes, one of them taught by your own President Wells, doing business then as a fresh-faced young professor. I struggled a bit with his class, actually. It was a field geology class. Because you see, I didn't have much experience with being in the field. My mother wanted me to be an artist and a writer or a musician. My father, I think, wanted me to marry well and be very good at cocktail parties. So when we went outside, started spending, going for overnight field trips, I didn't have experience with that. I had never been camping. I had no clue how to set up a tent. I didn't have any of the right equipment, and truth be told, I was really afraid of the dark. So, well, I may be useless, or at least, at least I felt then, but I'm also very proud, so I wasn't about to admit any of this <laughs> to anyone. And um, I survived. I survived my, la my ignorance by asking a friend if she would share her tent. I think I froze every night we were out because I was in a sleeping bag that I was designed for a slumber party, you know, down the block. And at night, I waited until everyone was very soundly asleep 
so that I didn't have to venture too far from the mothership to go pee. So compared to the embarrassment of being wholly unprepared to be a mountain man, the geology work itself was easy peasy. The lesson, uh, one lesson here, to, this is a, uh, a citation or uh, something from Yogi Berra, um, not the bear, the baseball player. When you come to a fork in the road, take it. Maybe you really don't know you, why you want to be a scientist. Maybe you have to fake knowing how to set up a tent. But when you make a choice, just commit to it. Commit to it right then and there and get down the road. You can figure out the details later. So despite not knowing what I wanted to do as I went into the university, I still graduated in four years. And with my acceptance into graduate school, I finally had a ticket out of Dodge. From UNM, I moved to Houston to pursue my master's degree at Rice University. Turns out grad school also, grad school in geology, comes with field work. This time in southern Mexico. By then, you should know, I knew how to set up my tent. I showed up there with my little S-wing hammer that I had been that I'd used out in the field before, only to find out it was going to be totally useless to collect the hard metamorphic rocks that I was studying. It, that would take a six-pound sledgehammer, swung very bunion-like, with enough force, literally, to break open a rock. Well, so we said about our field work, I was with my advisor knocking blocks off the outcrop. I, I would watch him do that, gather the rock, admire it, and put it in my sample bag. I thought, I got this. Well, I had it until about 45 minutes when he turned to me and he said, your turn. Whoa. I had another useless moment. <laughs> And uh, so I took the hammer, and I, I'd been watching him. I thought what I had to do, and so I told him, I, I picked it up, and I said, okay, now you turn around. Because it's bad enough that I didn't know how to do this. I wasn't going to have him watching me make my first attempt. And he obliged, thankfully, and I swung, my, I swung and gave it my all. I had the arm strength of a juvenile kangaroo. And I think I got some lichen off the rock. I think John heard it, the, the hammer go tink. And he turned around and offered me some help. And for the first time in my life, I wasn't too proud to say, I got this. So lesson here, you're going to need a big hammer if you want to whack hard rocks. And I believe that translates to the adage, use the right tool for the job and whack twice when you have to. Well, that lesson came in handy in my job as a new professor at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, the first woman in the department. There, I inherited a mass spectrometer for my lab that was serviceable, if not particularly new. Well, I certainly soon learned what serviceable means. It means you have to service it all the time. I had never fixed a mass spec before. Come on, I hadn't set up a tent before I went to college. I thought, oh, I'm an imposter. I have this job, I'm supposed to know how to do this. I wasn't going to tell anyone that I couldn't, that I had no clue. Thankfully, the lab door was closed. I didn't have to ask anyone to turn around. As I took my maiden journey, into the guts of a mass spec. I started with what I knew. The filament's hot, the filament's cold, the valve opens, the valve closes. You know, neck bones connected to the shoulder bone. Hey, this looks just like in the manual, except it's upside down. So I figured out a lot as I sat there for three full days trying to make trying to bring this old serviceable thing back to life. And at the end of day three, 
It still didn't work. Day four, I found the phone number for the company that makes the mass spec, and I called the engineer. And as he asked me question after question, have you tried this? Have you tried that? Have you tried that? I started gaining a lot of confidence because, in fact, I could say, yeah, and I figured that out all by myself. Yeah, I tried it, and this is what happened. And so by the end of day four, my mass spec was running again. And honestly, I felt like I had just conquered the world. So the lesson here is that you aren't born knowing it all. You aren't born knowing, you aren't born knowing much of it, frankly. You just have to figure it out as you go. And if there's a number for an engineer nearby, it's a good thing to call. Well, that's a lot of lessons, and I've only made it chronologically to 1989, and I know I stand between you and your diploma, so the chronology is going to stop here. There have been lots of other stories, I assure you, and if you want to know some of them, I'll probably be at the Capitol Bar again this evening, <laughs> because I did learn that about being a geologist. The fact is that life is going to challenge you from time, time and time again. Whether it's tents you don't know how to set up, sledgehammers you don't know how to swing, or mass specs that fail at the absolute worst moment. You will someday, probably, carefully plan your child's birth around a summer break, and they will be born March 1st. The cat will always throw up right before your big dinner party. And someday, you may have to hit target on the way home so your kids don't have to go commando the next day and laundry can wait till the weekend. That's a true story. <laughs> sometimes, in fact, all of these are, sometimes you will totally drop the ball and find yourself making a very uncomfortable apology. And indeed, some days, your greatest accomplishment may be just showing up and making it through the day. Life can get pretty rough, and you can feel pretty desperate. But try to recognize the scale of the crisis. Target works. Kids, kids were happy. Know that falling into the hole is really the worst choice. Take fair measure of yourself, of what you know, of what you don't know. Recognize your ability to learn and see your value, and then use it. Take your wins and your fails with grace and know that neither of those defines you. So the final lesson is this, and this is from Helen Keller, who is a contemporary of Yogi Berra. A bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn. So when, the ro when your road forks, take it. And when your road bends, lean into the curve. No matter what you're doing in 10 years, I can only guarantee you this, that it's not going to be what you're doing now. And honestly, you wouldn't want it to be. I hope you live your lives fully, class of 2022. Congratulations, and get going. Thank you, Dr. Mora. All right, now, the part of the ceremony that you have been waiting for, the presentation of degrees. <laughs> Degree candidates, family, and friends, please note the following details in your program. For candidates for bachelor's and associate degrees, a single asterisk signifies honors. A double asterisk is high honors, and a triple asterisk is highest honors. Graduates who have achieved the remarkable feat of making it through tech in four years receive a gold cover for their diploma, and as some of you can see, a button that says, I did it in four years. This achievement is also indicated in the program. Graduates, after you cross the stage, Please remember to pause for a photo with the president. And today we have Mr. Michael Vogerl, 
Director for the Center for Student Leadership and Engagement, presenting our bachelor's degrees recipients. President Wells, we now start with our grad, uh, candidates for the bachelor's degree. Will the candidates for the undergraduate degree please stand? These candidates, having completed the requirements prescribed in the curricula, representing their major fields of study, are presented with the recommendation of the Faculty Senate that they each now be granted the appropriate baccalaureate degree. President Wells? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents and upon the recommendation of our Faculty Senate, I now confer upon each one of you the appropriate bac baccalaureate degree. The first four students to walk across the stage today are graduating with two bachelor's degrees or a double major. So congratulations to those students for the special and rare accomplishment. So please approach the platform as your name is called to receive your diploma, please. dual bachelor's degrees in computer science and mathematics. Eric Benendike. Let's do this again. Dual bachelor's degrees in computer science and mathematics. Eric Benendike. <laughs> Dual bachelor's degrees in mathematics and physics with astrophysics option. Ryan Reed. Dual bachelor's degree in chemical engineering and chemistry, James Christian Ruff. <laughs> Dual bachelor's degrees in computer science and information technology, minor in mathematics, Joseph Zaravas. Associates of General Studies, Marina Martinez. <laughs> Bachelor, Bachelor of General Studies, Logan Cross. <laughs> Seneba Mason Presley. Bachelors of Science in Basic Sciences, Damian Banks. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Biology, Ashley Andrews. Emily Cook.
Tucker Diamond Ames. Sky Fisher. Jamie Jelinas. Sydney Gorley. Caitlin Mary Green. Anna Angharad Gabrielle Hunt. Nora Maceman. Tommy Ray McKnight. Alexis Pewa. Bachelors of Science in Biology with Environmental Science Option, Kelly Hunter. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Sciences with Biology Option, Amber Anaya. Elizabeth Renee Carrillo. <laughs> Raymond Castillo. <laughs> Tesla Nicole Newton. Bachelors of Science in Chemical Engineering, Bracey Chester, Minor in Mineral Engineering. <laughs> Destiny Joy Crawford. John Dolphelmeyer. <laughs> Madeline Rose Finale. <laughs> Jennifer Gamboa Gill. Ethelise Hernandez. <laughs> Catherine House, minor in chemistry. Chase Orion Kennard, minor in biology. Taylor May Lee, minor in chemistry. <laughs> Alexander Gino Logan. <laughs> Adam Lopez. Arsenia Lucero.
Mario de Dios Marquez, minor in chemistry. Brandon Thomas McReynolds. Muriel Olander. Monica Ramirez. Shane Michael Rosolio, minors in polymer science and chemistry. Jaren Enrique Salas, minor in explosives engineering. Kaoru Shimada. Bachelors of Science in Chemistry, Philip Edvard Ladadio Salvador. <laughs> Bachelors of Science in Chemistry with Biochemistry Option, Alyssa Brooke Neal. <laughs> Bachelors of Science in Civil Engineering, Matthew James Bauman. <laughs> Julianne Bretagne. <laughs> Christian Campos Mendoza. Braden Wade Fletcher. Dante Emilio Garcia. Jordan Shiloh Gonzalez. Brittany Green. John Ryan Himes. Isaiah Pahola. Santiago Antonio Lopez. <laughs> Vanessa Mahalka. <laughs> Julian McPherson. Jessica Misla. <laughs> Elizabeth Denise Kwan. <laughs> Estella Salinas. Daniela Renee Sanchez. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Computer Science. Jonathan Catlett Arnold.
Alexander Christian Baer, minor in mathematics. Logan Beverly. Victor Campos, minor in history. Tyler Bryn Charity. Jiwan Chong. Josiah Dimitri Curry. Brandon Sean Dennis. Patrick Aaron Duane, minor in electrical engineering. Garrett Evans. Michael Mignon Fon. Alan Fenton. Timothy Tyler Getch. Byron Hoyman. Donovan Jenkins. Brianna Klumker. John E. Leonard. Maya Patricia Longmire. Marissa Antoinette Loras. Brandon Adonis Montano. Orion Nasso. Douglas Newquist. Jen Marie Pfeiffer, minor in mathematics. Preston Boyd Ruff. Noah Schoonover. Miles Willis. Bachelor of Science in Earth Science, Haley May Dites. Kyle Stafford. Connor James Whitman.
Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering, Roman Baca. Zachary McDowell Bohemo. Ryan Xavier Batko. Quincy Bradfield. Evan Call, minor in optics, optical science and engineering. <laughs> Stephanie Rose Carrillo. <laughs> Zia Dushan Dovan. Corey Patrick Dodson. Diego Chavez Fristo. Marshall Gold. McKenna Gold. <laughs> Dominic James Romero. <laughs> Troy Sims. Jordan Mateo Tecio, minor in optical science and engineering. <laughs> Alita Marie Thompson, minors in history and mathematics. <laughs> Christopher Lee Vocal. Andrew Zamora, minor in mathematics. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Environmental Engineering. Nina Amjama. <laughs> Jamie Ray Bearclaw. Lucas Ford. <laughs> Isaiah Godelay. <laughs> Tiana Watchman. Bachelors of Science in Environmental Science with Biology Opson, Catherine Kennedy Bosley. <laughs> Bachelors of Science in Information Technology, Kevin Donaghy Helfert. Spencer Merrill. <laughs> Bachelors of Science in Management, Christopher David Nance, minor in Education.
Bachelor of Science in Material Engineering, Javier Ambrose. Spencer Curtis Detheridge. <laughs> Riley John Charles Knox, minor in mathematics. <laughs> Skyler Travis Matson. Bachelor of Science in Materials Engineering with Biomaterials Engineering Option. Enrico Jerome Malcolm. <laughs> Bachelor of Science in Materials Engineering with Metallurgical Engineering Option. Everson Cruz. Bachelor's of Science in Mathematics, Connor Lucas Butler, minor in Mechanical Engineering. <laughs> Michael John Gonzalez, minor in History. <laughs> Elijah Pilovsky, minor in Computer Science. Bachelor's of Science in Mechanical Engineering. It's going to be a long one. Savannah Noel Bradley. <laughs> Benjamin Cole Brown. <laughs> Osman Caraveo Macas. Jonathan Adan Carso. Joseph Carrillo. Donovan Antonio Caruso. Megan Cephas. <laughs> Rodrigo Francisco Cervantes. <laughs> Solomon Chavez. Melanie Sarah Diebel. Cole Christopher Dunning. Jet Ems. Jonathan Isaac Englund. Anna Fuentes. Brisa Jocelle Garcia. Minors in Science, Technology, and Society and Secondary Education. Denise Garcia. Sade Gutierrez. Sean Harrington. Matthew Houghton.
William Janney, minor in physics. Dade Charleston Lincoln. Frank Maldonado. Austin Robert Maxwell. Jesse Montano. Yasbeth Montoya. Austin Petring. Dylan Powell. Jason Matthew Presley. Megan Richardson. Dane Robergs. Diego Rodriguez. Rochelle Sandoval. Eric John Schroeder. Seth Cisneros, rhythm guitar. Daniel Richard Texera. Marco Antonio Valenzuela. Dustin V. Hill. Heath Williams. James Wilson. Bachelor of Science in Mineral Engineering, James Axel Hogan. Dustin Shane Southway. Luis Tejada Arata. Bachelor's of Science in Petroleum and Natural Gas in Engineering. Herson Amoretti Cruz Lanes. Richard Allen Haverland. Isai Antiveros Mena. Bachelors of Science in Physics, Cody Gareth Gray, Drums. Jaying, Italy, Heying, Belendrez, minor in mathematics. Cameron Klotz, minor in mathematics. Andrew Katoski, minor in mathematics, lights and sound.
Keith, Raymond, Lucero, bass guitar. Samuel Garrett Privet. Alana Vasquez. Bachelor of Science in Physics with Astrophysics Option. Isaiah, or excuse me, Isaac Reed Edelman, minor in mathematics. Francisco Ray Albert Pedroza, minor in mathematics. <laughs> Lucian Saad. <laughs> Anna Elizabeth Smith. Bachelors of Science in Physics with Astrophysics and Atmospheric Physics Option, Spencer Alexander Riley, Minor in Mathematics. <laughs> Bachelors of Science in Psychology, Yvonne Boltz. <laughs> Augusta Rayleigh Edwards. Yuran Ma. Carly Danielle Reed. Bachelors of Science in Technical Communications, Lizeth Anaya Ojeda. Jade Renee Baca. <laughs> Quinn Elise Bustos. <laughs> Rihanna Foley. Anastasia Heyo. <laughs> Bachelor's recipients, please move your tassels from right to the left side of your cap. <laughs> now, in addition to those who have, been present, uh, who have been present to participate in these exercises, the names of students who have qualified for the baccalaureate degree since the commencement of 2021, but who could not be present today are listed in the commencement program. Next in our ceremony, I would like to call on Dr. Steve Simpson, Dean of Arts and Sciences, to present the graduate degrees. Will the candidates for the master's degree please stand? President Wells, these candidates, having completed the requirements prescribed in the curricula, representing their major fields of study, are presented with the recommendation of the Faculty Senate that they may each now be granted the appropriate master's degree. President Wells. Dr. Jackson, thank you. By the virtue of authority, 
by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Regents, and upon the recommendation of the Faculty Senate, I now confer upon you the appropriate master's degrees. Please approach the platform when your name is called to receive your diploma. Come forward. It's a long walk. <laughs> we make them work here. You guys ready already? <laughs> All right. Start with Master of Engineering in Materials Engineering, Jonah Katz. Cheers. Master of Engineering in Mechanical Engineering with Specialization in Explosives Engineering, David Hernandez. Stephen Newman Palmer. <laughs> Justin Kerr Peters. <laughs> uh, Master of Science in Biology, Bridie Alexander Lowry. Catherine Victoria Batchelder. Cassandra Diane Velarda. Master of Science and Computer Science. Alexander Martin Benson. Omar Sharif. How about Masters of Science in Civil and Environmental Engineering? Okay, Charlotte R. Dungan. <laughs> Master of Science in Computer Science with Specialization in Information Technology, Manjusha Ravi. Master of Science in Electrical Engineering, Justice Engstrom. <laughs> Master of Science in Geology, Tyler Cantrell. <laughs> Master of Science in Hydrology, Katie McLean. Master of Science in Materials Engineering, Audrey Summers Campbell. <laughs> M 
Nicholas Anthony Goodwin II. Master of Science in Materials Engineering with Biomaterials Engineering Option, Noah Bruno Manns. <laughs> Master of Science in Mathematics with Specialization in Operations Research and Statistics, Rose Reek Abo Abo. Krishna Marentes. <laughs> Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering, Grace Tenorio. Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering with Specialization in Explosives Engineering, Jason Michael Falls. <laughs> Dylan Chance Purcell. Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering with Specialization in Fluid and Thermal Sciences, Christopher Harold Frederick. <laughs> Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering with Specialization in Mechatronics Systems and Robotics, Stephen Douglas Luco. Aaron James Misla. <laughs> Master of Science in Mineral Engineering, Hector G Garcia. Master of Science in Mineral Engineering with Specialization in Geotechnical Engineering, Hamid Ranjkesh. <laughs> Master of Science in Mineral Engineering with Specialization in Mineral Exploration, Nicholas Broder. Master of Science in Petroleum Engineering, Vincent Domato. <laughs> Master of Science in Physics, Thomas Godin. <laughs> Maryam Majtabai. Master of Science in Transdisciplinary Cybersecurity, Shadran Emo Goodmanson. <laughs> Casey Dean Haynes. Master of Science for Teachers, Laureen Pepperson. <laughs> Master's recipients, 
please move your tassels from the right to the left side of your cap. In addition to those who have been present to participate in these exercises, the names of students who have qualified for the master's degree since the commencement of 2021, but who could not be present today are listed in the commencement program. You may have a seat. Next, we will present the candidates for the Doctor of Philosophy degree. Will the candidates please stand? President Wells. Before the candidates come to the stage, I'm very excited to inform all of you that today we're starting a new tradition here at New Mexico Tech for our PhD recipients. In addition to receiving the paper diploma, each of our PhD recipients will be awarded a copper diploma that has been, explo been formed explosively and etched by explosions. The process of creating these copper diplomas starts with a piece of copper which is placed in contact with a laser etched rubber sheet that has all the text of the diploma as well as a piece of explosive material. When the explosion is detonated, the explosive gas jets through the rubber etching and produces the wood wording into the uh, copper sheet. In addition, a piece of aluminum foil is explosively welded and, welded and imprinted into the copper that contains the New Mexico Tech seal. We believe that this special diploma incorporates the history of our university's mining, materials, chemistry, physics, and engineering fields in a truly unique matter. And I want to thank Faculty Senate Chair Michael Hargather and student regent Veronica Espinoza for this very new, creative, and, and uh, exciting form of diploma for our university. So thank you very much. President Wells, these candidates, having completed the requirements prescribed in the curricula, representing their major fields of study, are presented with the recommendation of the Faculty Senate that they each now be granted the appropriate Doctor of Philosophy degree. By the virtue of the authority vested by the Board of Regents, and upon the recommendation of the Faculty Senate, I now confer upon each of you the appropriate Doctor of Philosophy degree. Each recipient will approach the platform when their name is called to receive their diploma representative of their degree, and the graduate is also vested by their PhD advisor with the academic hood representative of their discipline. Please come forward. So we're making them go around too. <laughs> I think we should make them do an extra lap. Our first candidate, a Doctor of Philosophy in Chemistry, Akanayaka Nishanthi Elipola, um, dissertation title, Mineralogy Controlled Photochemistry of Environmental Pharmaceuticals, Ecological and Human Health Implications, advised and hooded by Dr. Guyan Rubasinghengi.
Susanta Ganagamaji, dissertation title, Design, Synthesis, and Characterization of Mechanosensitive Dual Fluorescent Dyes as Potential Probesphor Biological Applications, advised and hooded by Dr. Michael Heggie. Shahrir Hussain, dissertation title, Spherical Supported Lipid Bilayer Based Biosensors for Diagnostic Applications, advised and hooded by Dr. Menika Piasena. Amadini Mendes Gia Singha, dissertation title, Survey of Marine Biogeochemical Model Hierarchy, Global Dissolved Organic Carbon, advised and hooded by Dr. Guyan Rubasinghegi and Dr. Scott Elliott. Dumindu Chanaka Prima Chandra, dissertation title, Novel Semiconductor Nanomaterials for the Photocatalytic Conversion of CO2 and CH4 to Value-Added Products, advised and hooded by Dr. Michael Hagee. Doctor of Philosophy in Earth and Environmental Science with Dissertation in Geophysics, Rhiannon Elizabeth Vesselli, Dissertation Title, <laughs> Contributions to Improving Detection Capabilities for Global Seismic Networks, Characterization of Socorro Region Seismicity, and Modeling of Seismic Wave Propagation, advised and hooded by Dr. Susan Billick. Doctor of Philosophy in Earth and Environmental Science with Dissertation in Hydrology, Kyle Anderson Stark. <laughs> Dissertation title, Sediment Transport um, in Desert Channels Driven by Flash Flooding, advised and hooded by Dr. Daniel Cadal. Doctor of Philosophy in Mathematics with Dissertation in Applied and Industrial Mathematics, John Richard Chaleri. <laughs> Dissertation title, Electron Transport Within Compound Semiconductors with an Emphasis on the Cubic Phase of Boron Nitride, advised and hooded by Dr. Brian Borchers. Recipients, you know the drill. 
Move those tassels from the right side to the left side of your cap. And let's hear it for all of our graduates, particularly the PhD candidates. Let's go. Yeah. In addition to those who have been present to participate in these ceremonies, the names of students who have qualified for the Doctor of Philosophy degree since the commencement of 2021, but could not be present today, are listed in the commencement program. And now, I'll turn the program over to President Wells for some closing remarks. Thank you, Dr. Jackson. You can see whatever he ate for breakfast has not worn off. As we bring this uh, 2022 commencement to a close, you're probably all aware that I don't end commen commencements in a normal way. We do something a little different here, non-traditional. And I'm assuming all of you would like to see the same thing, yes? Would you like to have something a little different for a send-off? Okay, here we go. So here's your send-off, folks. Go for it, everybody, now. Those with, yeah. I have a Let her rip. And what you're seeing is our able-bodied rugby team unable to grab the ropes <laughs> to release the balloons, so. Wouldn't you know it, the right colors came out, right? I told you we don't do anything normal here, so. Uh, well, as we work on the balloons, class, every choice that you've made, every decision you've made has brought you this point to be a graduate of New Mexico Tech. And for our people on the, uh, on the left side of the stage, welcome to the balloons. So, uh, so I'd like everyone to join me in providing our sincere congratulations to all the graduates and their honorees today. So let's give them all a big round of applause. I have um, one more. Uh, quick point as the balloons work their way out of the bags. After the recession, I invite the uh, graduates to return to the campus uh, with their families to take personal photos with your friends and their families. Please take the time to visit our bookstore, walk around and see our beautiful campus. We have fruit trucks there, you can grab a bite. We have dessert tables at Macy Center. And best wishes and congratulations to all of you. Thank you all. Well, our graduates, please, and the platform party, please stand for the recessional.
Another turning point, a fork stuck in the road. Time grabs you by the wrist, directs you where to go. So make the best of this past and don't ask why. It's not a question, but a lesson learned.